You have reached the Geek Elite. Good luck. Hey. Oh, hey, Jeff. What's going on, guys? Oh, you know, talking about Superman. Oh, cool. I could talk about Superman. I could talk some more about Superman. We know. I'll bet a few people would want to get in on this. I'm down. You know it. That sounds like fun. I'll do it. Cool. Let's do it. We can call the show Men of Steel. And you can find it at certainpov.com. Or wherever you get your podcasts. Yay. Welcome back for another issue of Imagine If. This week we are here and we are talking about The Suicide Squad. Chris and I went and saw the movie. Uh, Chris, actually, did you go to the theater to watch or did you watch it on HBO Max? I I did manage to make it to the theater and I'm glad I did. Um, uh, That's definitely worthy of a bigger screen than my cell phone. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yes, and I'm sure James Gunn is very happy to hear you say that. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Uh, it, it, just to get this out of the way, I just want to say this now. I had a fun time with this movie. I thought this movie was super fun. Was it a good movie? Eh, not so much, <laughs> but it was super fun. Like, I am so glad that I saw it in the theater. I'm so glad I paid money to see it. I would watch it again. But... If you look at it too hard, you examine it too much, you're just going to come up with a lot of questions, and there's a lot of stuff that just left me like, eh, I'm glad I laughed, but does, does it do much else for me? No. How did, how did you feel? <laughs> you know, so uh, that's how, when I go to the movies, I rate it that way. Did I have fun? Um, I did. I found, I was actually, I was talking with a friend about this last night. It's interesting because character is important to me, and I loved the fact that James Gunn found a way to get me to like these characters. And like you said a moment ago, when you're in the moment, it's great. But when you stop and think, you're like, wait a second, why? You know, because again, the main character, well, one of the main, one of the principal actors in this, Iridis Alba's Bloodsport guy has two appearances, you know, so that's completely a different character. But, you know, if I take it for what was presented, I have fun, but when I really sit down and think about it, there's a lot of things that I have to connect dots to that I have to force to make happen. (laughs) But, you know, I'd see it again. I had a great time. And I'll be honest with you, it actually, I'm I'm hopeful for the DCEU. Yeah, yeah. There there are certain things that could go further, and I'm okay with this. Uh, so when we get to that point where we're going to talk about the movie, we will be spoiling the movie. So if you haven't watched it yet, go watch it and come back. But first, as always, we're going to get to what is on that spinner rack because we haven't talked about the spinner rack in two weeks. So let's get to it. Chris, what's new for this new comic book day? Uh, all right. So as you know by now, the drill Tuesdays is when your brand new DC comics will be out. So this week we will be getting action comics. 1034. There is some big change coming. Uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson is promising stuff to the point of like the death of Superman level. So if you want to get in on the next big thing, I would definitely say start picking up some of those back issues and get on it now. So action comics is where you get your Superman because Superman We'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> Batman Fortnite zero point number one is going to be. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong list there. My bad. Uh, there we go. Batman Reptilian issue three will be out. So if you want to see what Garth Enos and Liam Sharp are doing with Killer Croc and some bat characters, definitely check that out as part of DC's black label. Batman Superman issue 21 will be out. This series is coming to an end, but Gene Loon Yang has been doing some amazing stuff with the partnership between Batman and Superman. Um, I do want to shout out to the variant cover by Carrie Andrews. I like that. Like, it's just fun seeing Robin drive the Batmobile, Batman's pouched up on the top of it, and Superman's flying in. It just looks, it, it takes me back to those old 1940s 
50s world's finest covers because a lot of people forget that the world's finest we just think superman and batman but robin was a part of it so i think that's so cool now the big question is which robin is that you know i don't know it's the, that uh, that batmobile definitely screams out very 80s with that air intake in the front so you so know it should be dick, dick or jason <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah. that'll that'll be interesting but i just thought that was really nice Oh, um, speaking of, before you get going too quick, I just wanted to tell you thank you because I uh, finally read my trade of the three Jokers that you had gotten me, and wow, I, I really enjoyed that story a lot, and I want to say that I was not expecting a Jason Todd, uh, Barbara Gordon love interest. Right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah that was... Uh... That was quite the twist, and it's so sad because it's like, if I remember correctly, he leaves her the letter, and then the letter just kind of like falls and and gets swept away, right? Yeah, so, (laughs) yes, that is a very sad part of the story, and I just wanted to bring this up because in this new history storyline of uh, Barbara Gordon, uh, she was out of commission as uh, Batgirl for roughly a year, right? Where she was recovering from be from being shot in the spine by the Joker. I do believe in that year she was still Oracle. Now, if you are interested in a girl or a lady that is super into tech, do you leave a tight uh, handwritten note taped to her door? Do you find a tech way to send her a, a, a note? Like, come on, Jeff, I get it. We needed the note to fall off and like get swept away by presumably a joker. Uh, but it was, I was just like, that is the worst way they could have done this. Well, but, you know, letters are always an endearing when they're personalized. But you're right. It, it serves more towards, okay, we don't know if this continuity will – well, we don't know if this story will be in continuity because it – I mean, it's definitely like I would say to enhance your reading of uh, Three Jokers, go back and read, you know, A Killing Joke and then mm-hmm. read that. Cause, mm-hmm. So it's like, well, is that its own world? Is it – intersect you know whatever all those things are i mean dc's like hey if you liked it it counts <laughs> yeah no i mean that's um, the way dc's doing it now it's just like everything counts and nothing counts it's it, yeah it, it's all in flux until we decide it needs it, it's relevant like kind of thing which yeah. is sucks but it's fine you know what you just have to read your comic books that way now and that's just the way it is <laughs> yeah if the if the sales numbers come back then yes <laughs> if the sales numbers are low then no uh but yeah but no, i just i it definitely serves for the plot point so that way if the next writer wants to talk about their potential love then there we go but if not then it can be washed away i, I mean uh, but I yeah to, that was i have oh, to ahead. say i have to say uh i forget at the moment who the artist was on the book but the artist oh jason for book that's right jason for book jason for book drew jason todd in the most dick grayson way ever like he looks a lot like dick grayson throughout that whole book as opposed to looking like jason todd which isn't a lot of difference in the two of them in the first place but i just want to say in this particular one it looked a lot more like dick dick grayson <laughs> well yeah because what is it it's i think dick has the the double bangs when he was robin and then jason just has the single bang when he's uh, when he was Robin, of so they course. should look alike. <laughs> that way, people don't ask questions like, "Is that a different Robin?" Because <laughs> actually, okay, this I always think of this is the boy like poor Jason Todd. The guy has the worst luck. So I remember reading. Um, I I got a trade paperback collection of a death in the family. That was the first way I read that story, and Denny O'Neill wrote uh, an introduction, and it was funny. Because, like, they just bag on the character of Jason Todd so bad. And he was like, I remember one of the things, like, he says it, and I'm sure I'm, I'm, you know, paraphrasing here, but he was like, you know, essentially like, yeah, this lady was mad that we were killing Robin. And she's like, well, my son loved him. And it's like, no, don't worry, we're not killing the good Robin, we're just killing Jason Todd. And it's like, <laughs> oh my god, like, he does not look anything different as a character to distinguish between Robin 1 and Robin 2. Right. And it's like, don't worry, the good one's still here, we're just getting rid of this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like man so yeah jason jason took um i I was lucky enough to review that whole series and 
that was one of the things I kept talking about was the physical abuse Jason took, I don't think matters to the guy. He's probably such a sadist that he's like, hit me again, and it energizes him. But, man, the emotional punches he got to that whole series. Like, when Joker turns around, he's like, you know you're my sidekick, right? <laughs> and he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, you became the Red Hood. You're following in my steps. It was like, oh, my God. So, like, yeah, Jason's going to need some serious therapy after that. <laughs> I mean, I, I do love the very end of Batman being like, I know who the Joker is. Like, I know his secret identity. I can just never tell anybody because I'm keeping his family <laughs> safe. Like, like that is that's actually pretty awesome. Like, I, he has to play it up as like, no one knows the Joker is complete mystery to everybody, kind of thing. <laughs> well, now we're going down that path of Wolverine's origin, and it's like, man, True. I there are just some things that'd be so much cooler if we didn't know. But True. you know, I will say Jeff did a good job of of getting there. He didn't open it, so we do know there's something, but we still don't know what it is. So some of the mystery is there. So that was pretty cool. But I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, that was that was a great. Um, just so great. Like I loved issue one, uh, speaking to Jason for books art. Like I love that he referenced so many great moments in bat history and getting to see those again in his art was awesome. So yeah, that's just so for those of you out there, it's available in the three issue prestige format, hardcover format or trade paperback. Uh, just amazing. So you're, you're going to have to help me out. I know you probably don't have your copy in front of you. Did they put any quotes on the trade dressing? Do you know by chance? Uh, I don't know by chance. Okay. Well, I'll have to shake you down for that. Cause I'm curious. I'm hopeful. Maybe they quoted something from me. Cause I know in their publicity, right. they did take some of my quotes. They did. Uh, so whether or not it makes it, to the publication that's the big one like well, marvel's way cooler about it dc come on man help a guy out <laughs> <laughs> all right back to the spinner rack. yeah all right so uh checkmate issue three will be out uh this one's got a great cover for you mitch so we got a nice uh alex mavely green arrow coming at us sh firing off some arrows uh bendis and mavely have teamed up for this one the variant features manhunter oh her name escapes me right now it always um, escapes us it's uh jessica nope no nope. no not jessica oh. not shaw nope i don't see it there <laughs> i i can't remember yeah. her name right now as yeah, i'm trying to think about it I, and i think about her a lot as a character i i would love to see like if they ever did any team ups i think her and jessica jones would be a fantastic team up oh that would be uh, a pretty good team up yeah, I'm just they've been through so much. They're a strong independent character. I think that would be great. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe I might have to jump on this book. Um, this is the book where so I guess I'm gonna talk a lot about me during the spinner act. But well, this is a book <laughs> where I would love uh, Dr. Peter Cross to come into. Like I think he'd be great, like fine. You don't want to put him in the superheroics and whatnot, but he still has that um uh, that that mind that can solve these puzzles that can go through stuff um and on top of that you have a doctor on the team so i would love to see him here uh, it does look very good i can say bendis and mavley when they worked on daredevil they did some amazing stuff so this spyness i think could be great so it'll be very interesting but i wouldn't get my hopes up too high uh recently brian michael bendis moved all of his independent stuff out of dc's publications and i believe he sent it all to image so that's raising a big question what's going to be the future of brian michael bendis over at dc comics because he is no longer exclusive so that'll be something to see it is kate spencer kate spencer there we go Way i was going to say kate <laughs> capshaw but it's not that it's kate spencer there you go, Kate Capshaw. That'll be her uh, mat, uh, matches Malone secret identity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, Detective Comics 1042 will be out. So if you're looking for some great Huntress stories, definitely check her out there. Uh, Harley Quinn issue six will be out, and we get a team up of Catwoman and Harley Quinn. And this will also tie into Fear State, which is happening right now over in the. Um, the Batman books. And if you liked the Suicide Squad, there is a variant cover by Ricardo Federici uh, featuring King Shark, Savant. Michael Savant, and uh, Harley Quinn in their DCEU style. 
Icon and Rocket Season 1, Issue 2 will be out, which brings back the Milestone characters, which finally, DC, finally. So you get to see more of their adventures there. Mr. Miracle, The Source of Freedom, will be hitting its fourth issue. So if you want to see how Shiloh Norman deals with the uh, Mr. Miracle mantle and what's going on there definitely check that out i believe it's a six-part mini so we're we're getting closer robin issue five will have a robin team up so we are gonna get nightwing tim drake jason todd's red hood stephanie brown spoiler the previous robins they're gonna come and help uh damien out or maybe they're just gonna be annoyed by damien we don't know <laughs> but shenanigans will ensue uh ruby has crossed over with justice league so we are on issue five of that series this is a big one this is what i am super excited for superman 78 will be finally getting its first issue. So the premise behind this is, what if the, I guess not what if, in an <laughs> Elseworld, <laughs> in an Elseworld, uh, we get to see more adventures of the Christopher Reeves, Richard Donner, um, uh, Superman world. So uh, I love the fact that Wilfredo Torres is doing his best to uh, feature the actors and actresses likeness. Uh, we will be finally getting another villain in that world outside of Lex Luthor. So Brainiac will be the big bad in there. And then also a great thing. Well, not a, I mean, I guess the best way to handle something. So uh, they will be doing a dedication to Dick Donner in there as well. So I'm very excited for that. Uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And if you like your variant covers, so I believe the website is Big Time Comics. And I would love to put this on your eyes, Mitch. Uh, you remember those Jim Lee covers? Okay, Big Time Collectibles, I think is their name. Um, but you remember those Jim Lee covers where he had for, what was it, the... Um, hush so it was batman standing on that gargoyle peering over the city and then when he joined up and did the superman one for uh uh for tomorrow mm -hmm. so this new artist miko suyan is homaging those so they have a superman 78 one with the christopher reeves standing on the you know eagle perched over the city and then they did a batman 89 one which I'm sure I won't be able to find as quick and easy. <laughs> there it is. Uh, so with the Michael Keaton Batman perched over his city with the gargoyle. I think those are so great. I am super hyped for those. So uh, they're definitely, they're a little bit more pricier. They're 20 bucks. Uh, but man, talk about some beautiful wall art. So it's like, I know I went and bought myself a copy. So now I'm going to have to go dig through my back issues to find the Jim Lee ones. So now I can have the four of them displayed. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be good. it'd be a good display. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And speaking of Superman, so Superman, son of Kal-El. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, the Superman book will be featuring the adventures of John Kent. So Superman is no longer a Kal-El uh, Clark Kent book. This will be written by Tom Taylor and we will see uh, Jonathan growing up into stuff. Uh, apparently he's going to get a new secret identity. I think it was, it's either Finn Connors or, or Connor Finn. I forget the order. Um, but anyways, so yeah, so I'm very curious because I guess it sounds like Jonathan Kent is very public since, you know, Clark Kent went public with his identity. So it'll be interesting to see that he still has to find a way to do a secret identity, even though the need to. So that'll be interesting. Uh, there's a great family cover by Inuit Lee uh, with Lois Clark. And then of course, crypto as well. And then, if you are still collecting those, the Suicide Squad variants, uh, Superman, Son of Kal-El, issue number two, has a variant by Sammy Barassi, uh, featuring Bloodsport, Mongal, and I think Ratcatcher 2. So if you're collecting those, definitely be on the lookout. Superman vs. Lobo will be a new black label title by T uh, Tim Seeley, Sarah Beatty, and Mirka Andolfo. Um, so I guess if you're just looking for an all-out throw down the book with the whole good cop bad cop thing going this is definitely the one to check out wonder woman black and gold issue three will be out continuing some uh new adventures by different creative talents wonder woman issue 778 will be out as well and not much in the way of collected editions but if you're a fables fan fables compendium three will be out as well 
And then don't forget to return Wednesday for all your brand new Marvel comics. So Alien Issue 6 will be out. So Philip Kelly... Philip Kennedy Johnson will be attacking the darker side of aliens instead of the heroic side. Uh, Amazing Fantasy Issue 2 will be out. So this is Carrie Andrews' Fantasy World of Marvel. It's just all over the place. So if you're looking for a wild story but with familiar characters, this could definitely be it. There's a slew of variant covers. Uh, cover D by Felipe Mansafera. I just love that painted style. The Spider-Man looks great. Uh, the Barbarian Captain America doesn't look too bad, but some wild stuff to be checking out there. And Nick Spencer's Swan Song is moving along. So Amazing Spider-Man issue 72 will take us further down the Sinister War. So the I believe it's the Sinister Six against the... Uh, Oh, gosh, are they the Sinister Squadron? I forget what they are, but one is basically like, we're just here to commit crimes, and the other one is we're here to kill. So we're going to be dealing with that, and obviously some of the fallout from Kindred and maybe Mephisto? Who knows? It worked for WandaVision. It might work here. (laughs) So we'll definitely get to see that as well. Uh, And Inhuk Lee is also doing an amazing Silk variant cover. So if you want to get a nice cover feature for her, check that one out. David Baldion is doing a Vulture handbook cover, and then Carlos Gomez will be having a connected variant. Uh, so we see Mary Jane and Norman Osborn in the background with the Spider-Man. So that'll be very interesting to see how that connects to the next piece. Avengers Annual Number One will be out. This will take us back to the Infinite Destinies, where the Infinity gems or stones whatever you call them now uh where they've either become people or they've teamed up with people to become new stone bearers so everybody's looking to see if these new people will be good or bad black widow issue 10 will be out by kelly thompson cable reloaded number one that's right old man cable is back and not only is he back but he's going to space uh cable reloaded will tie into the last annihilation and i've been reading that series so far so we have two issues over in guardians of the galaxy and one issue in sword and it has been great so if you want to see a space jam all across the marvel universe uh dormammu is the bad guy holy crap dude it is something else so basically dormammu took over ego so that way he could be a giant head in space and then ego was also given a gift by galactus to have a body so now we have a giant ego Dormammu infested body that is wow. taking over space. Yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. Okay. Dark oh, Dark Hawk's back with issue number one. So that's right. The blast from the 90s is here celebrating his 30th anniversary. So Kyle Higgins has done some amazing stuff with characters. It'll be interesting to see what he does with Dark Hawk and the very confusing legacy. But don't worry, we're getting a new costume. Let's see how long it lasts. <laughs> a new costume. <laughs> Yep. Uh, Extreme Carnage is still happening. So if you like the character of Riot, he's getting his own one shot. So definitely feel free to check those out. And also don't forget, there is a variant collection by Jeff Johnson that will be kind of in the trade mar- or in the trading card style. So it should be nine covers connecting to make a poster, kind of like they did with the, um, oh, I think it was the Marvel Universe 1993 or 1994 trading cards. So that was pretty cool. Then we've got the uh, Marvel Voices Identity. So if you are looking for some more character one-shots, definitely check this out. Uh, It feels like it'll be representing uh, characters of Asian descent as well. So if you're looking forward to some stories with, uh, by the cover here, it looks like I can see uh, Silk. Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. Miss Marvel. Jubilee and Jimmy Wu. Uh, it looks like they're on the center there. So that'll be pretty good. And again, written by Gene Lun Yang. Uh, he's done some amazing stuff. So I'm very curious to see some of those uh, stories. Like, I am glad that Marvel and DC are both taking the time to give us one shot stories. Like, it is kind of refreshing to not have to be like, here's part eight of a story, you know? So mm-hmm. that's, that's really cool. So I'm glad they're doing those. Um, there are various. 
uh, variant covers for it. So making it all the way to the letter H. So definitely check that out. And if you've got Shang Chi fever, because he's coming pretty soon, correct? Yeah, I like, believe the first weekend in yeah the first weekend in September. Yeah, so uh, there's a beautiful cover, variant cover by Inyuk Lee. So if you want to get on that now before it goes insane on the secondary market, that might be a great idea. Nonstop Spider-Man is finally unstopped, and he's back. (laughs) Uh, I just had to appreciate the irony of that. So Joe Kelly, great writer, has fun stuff, and it's great to see him on Spider-Man. And they created a book called Nonstop Spider-Man. And then, like, what, issue two got delayed, issue three got held, and then it stopped. So now it's finally back, and it's like, man, that's just got to hurt. But anyway, so, yes, issue four is back. What's going on in the book? I don't know. It's been too long, but hopefully you're enjoying. <laughs> but uh, why, Spider-Man- why oh, go with go nonstop? Like, you have Sensational Spider-Man, you have Amazing Spider-Man, you have Spider-Man, you have uh, Amazing Peter Parker, you have... Uh, I'm sure there's been other titles for Spider-Man. Why go with nonstop? It does. I. I that one thing I don't think about for Spider-Man is nonstop. Yes, Peter Parker is always busy and things are always happening to him, but nonstop is not the word that I would think. I think the premise, though, with this one is it's just for some reason Peter Parker wants to live the life of a superhero 24/7. Okay. Um, you know, but you're right. Heart attack Spider-Man sounds better than <laughs> nonstop Spider-Man. You know, um, I, I don't know. Like, but yeah, I guess that's just the premise. Uh, but if you are a Baron Zemo fan, he will be popping up. Whether he dances, I don't know. That'll be the tough <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, let's see. This one I am super excited for, though. Spider-Man Life Story Annual Number One. Uh, so Spider-Man Life Story was a story by Chip Zardaski and Mark Bagley. And they basically did Spider-Man growing up in the 60s in real time in our world. Uh, So that was fantastic to watch. I loved how each episode or each issue was a decade in its own. And we would see, you know, like, hey, when the 70s happened, how did uh, Gwen Stacy and the Clone Saga appear in the 90s? How did the Clone Saga and the symbiotes, how did they deal with it? And it even led all the way up to uh, Miles Morales. So very, very wild stuff. Uh, This one looks like it'll be taking more of a look at J. Jonah Jameson. So I'm super excited to hear Chuck Zardaski put those words in JJJ's mouth. Uh, So definitely check that one out. And this one's dedicated just for you, Mitch. There's a John Romita Jr. variant. Oh, Uh, great. It's it's actually pretty good looking art for once. I think that's one of the few characters that John can really do his thing and it looks good. Okay. Uh, Not too much of a blockhead. No. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Let's see. We've got quite a few Star Wars books as well. And then we have Strange Academy issue 12. So if you want to see some of the mystical side of Marvel, check it out. Spider-Man, or sorry, Symbiote Spider-Man Crossroads number two will be out. Uh, So we get to see more adventures in a world where Peter kept it. And I've got to say, David Baldione did a variant cover. It's just black and white. Man, that is cool. Like, that is just, I, I hope Marvel does that as a poster. That is such a cool looking variant cover. Um, Thor issue 16 will be out, taking Donny Cates' wild adventures there. Oh, and by the way, it is Deadpool's 30th anniversary, so there will be a lot of Deadpool variants out there. United States of Captain America issue 3 will be out, so if you're looking for first appearances, definitely check it out. So we will be having. Joe Gomez, the Captain America of the Kickapoo tribe. So that'll be pretty wild to see what his story is and how he contributes to the world of Captain America. Winter Guard is here. So Winter Guard number one. So that's right. The characters you loved from the Black Window, Black Widow movie will be resurfacing and getting their own story. So yeah, continuity be damned. We're going to definitely follow in the footsteps of the MCU to see what's going on. So we will be getting Yelena. I think she's going to be formally known as the White Widow. Uh, Alexi will be back as uh, the Red Guardian. So it's going to be pretty wild. Uh, Ryan Cade is going to be the writer on this one. Um, and it's basically based off of Jason Aaron's winter guard, which has been trying to capture she Hulk right now over in Avengers. So there could be some interesting stuff. All right. And oh, sorry, just a couple more bits. Uh, yeah. we've got, so quite a few variant covers there. Uh, Wolverine issue 15 will be out. So Wolverine is just doing his thing because right now we are not in any crossovers. 
And for collected editions, Fantastic Four Collection Volume 1 will be reprinted. So if you want to get those early amazing stories by Stan and Jack, definitely check that one out. Fantastic Four Epic Collection Volume 7 will take us further into the future. So if you're uh, looking to build that Fanny 4 library, definitely check it out. Avengers will be getting their Marvel Masterwork Volume 21. So there's some Black Knight stories featured in that, which is perfect timing because we have a movie. And Venom, the King in Black trade paperback, Volume 6 will be out, which ties into the major King in Black story. I was very entertained by that. Um, I read both the main series and the Venom book, so those two play very nicely with each other. That's your spinner rack, so that, protect your wallet. <laughs> That's a big spinner rack. Uh, all right, as we said, we discussed in the beginning, we're going to go over uh, The Suicide Squad, which is available right now on HBO Max, or you can go see it in the movie theater. Um, the first thing I, I think we have to do is we have to go over the huge cast of characters in this movie, right? Yeah, that's a good start starting point there. So we have Harley Quinn returning because honestly, that is your biggest character in the in the DCU at the moment. Uh, I mean, she's got Suicide Squad. She has uh, Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, and uh, this movie. I feel like was she was in another another one, wasn't she? So she Margot Robbie herself. Uh, yeah, like Suicide Squad, the Suicide Squad, Birds of Prey. Um, Maybe not. Maybe I'm. I'm I think that's it. I think that's that's her trifecta because I do remember the what was it the underwater scene, but I think that was in Suicide Squad, correct? I, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's it. I mean, there is there is definitely the animated series with Harley Harley Quinn, but that's Harley Quinn the character, not Margot Robbie the actress. But but just goes to show that Harley Quinn the character is huge. So not making her a part of this movie was would have been a huge mistake. So Harley Quinn, Margot Robbie returning as Harley Quinn. We have Bloodsport coming in, played by Idris Alba, and obviously this was, this was, they just, it, it, we couldn't get Will Smith to come back as Deadshot, so we're just gonna put another actor in and change the name to Bloodsport. It's the exact same character. Yep. <laughs> he, he's just he doesn't he's not like the father figure as much as uh, Deadshot was. Um, cause as you see in this movie, when he's talking to his daughter through the plexiglass, like, he's like, I told you I'm not a good dad. Like you shouldn't be trying to be like me. You should try There's to find your own good way. In me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have, uh, we had Captain Boomerang returning. We have Rick Flagg returning. Uh, I think that's the only, oh, and Amanda Waller returning. Uh, other than that, we don't have any other characters returning from the first movie. Uh, new characters. We have Peacemaker played by John Cena. We have uh, King Shark, voiced by uh, Sylvester Stallone, which it, I'm not gonna, I'm not ashamed to admit that it took me almost to the end of the movie till I realized that was Sylvester Stallone's voice. Uh, <laughs> but it is body movement was done by Steve Agee, who is also in the movie as another character as one of the one of Amanda Waller's people. I don't know if he's a agent or not, but uh, I guess he is. John Economos. Uh, I don't know if that's a character from the, in the comics. Economos is the warden of Bell Reef, and he also first appeared in Suicide Squad number one, which was written by John Ostrander, who also got a part in the movie. Yeah. So, do you know the part that Josh John Ostrander played? Oh yeah, yeah. He's the doctor inserting the uh, nano bombs. Really? So, like he's definitely featured very heavily in in Michael Roker's scene when they're putting the bombs into him, like he's the uh, bald headed gentleman, white hair, you know, very crazy scientist looking guy with the little round glasses and, you know, smiling as he jabs him. So yeah, that was, that's John Ostrander right there. Cool. Did not realize that. Uh, we also have Starro, the conqueror. Now, what did you think of the first on screen, big live action <laughs> version of Starro? I am so glad it happened. I am so glad it happened because, okay, it, it, superhero movies are a blessing and a curse. You know, it's like, all right, we are, we're, we're, we're in this spectacular world. We have all this stuff happening, but like with X-Men being one of the front runners, it was like, nope, we don't want fantastic costumes. Nobody's going to believe it. It's going to look stupid. Now, luckily a lot of characters have, you know, 
said no to that. You know, Spider-Man, when he came out, no, we went with the classic red and blue as best as they could and all these things. But it's it's the thing where it's like, I mean, a giant starfish, really? That's the bad guy? <laughs> yes. That giant starfish is why we have the Justice League of America. That's like, right. that was the JLA's first comic book villain. Now, yes, even back in the day, they retconned things right away. So he was not why the JLA formed, but that was why we got to see their first adventure. Um, I was really hoping James Gunn was going to use Lime as one of the one ways to defeat the villain, as they did it in the uh, comics. But I'm so glad it happened. I'm so glad they kept it as ridiculous looking as it was. Was, you know this giant starfish and the little spores oh man they were scary as heck dude like you see those things flying out you and it sucks right on your face and you know it's not just an easy like it hugs you no it's got these little you know claws and teeth that are just digging into you so i that was fantastic i loved it <laughs> so let me ask you this who's the villain in this movie oh honestly i guess the the villain would probably have to be the fake country's government. Um, I forget what that country was called because it wasn't Dalalia. Yeah, there you go. So like their new king, like he would have been the bad guy, but then he gets killed. So then when it comes to that, their lead general, he's the bad guy. Um, the United States government is the bad guy because obviously they've been sending funding so they could experiment on Starro. Um, so like you just basically have that big government and corrupt, you know, royalty or your government or your villains in this one. Yeah. I mean, obviously the end of the movie has Starro as this giant kaiju destroying the city, killing people, taking people over and stuff like that. But even when we get that last, we get that last line from him through the voice of the second president day general, whatever, um, He's like, I was just fine floating amongst the stars doing my own thing and you guys brought me here, like kind of thing. And you're just like, oh, my heart. (laughs) But you know what's interesting? And I don't know if I'm reimagining this, but let's, uh, and I'll I'll have to pull the issue up. I feel like I've heard that line, um, and you might have read this. Remember when Grant Morrison was writing Justice League of America, or JLA, Mm -hmm. and they had that one issue where... Starro came and he leached himself onto the earth and was taking stuff. And then Sandman appeared. And that was the one where he told Kyle, he's like, you're the greatest Green Lantern because you know fear. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if those elements are helping, but I felt like that was because the end of it, he's got that little jar with all the little Starros in them. And he's like, oh, they'll just be out there searching the stars or something. So I don't like, I, I feel like that line has more weight. I haven't researched it just yet, but I felt like that line has more weight than just tugging at your heartstrings. Cause you're right. In the end, you do feel bad for this giant, you know, starfish that just wants to absorb you and take over everything. It's like, Oh, poor guy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And honestly, to add to the list of the actual villains of the movie, I would have to say the thinker, which was a new character we added in played by Peter Capaldi. Uh, Obviously he's a, mad scientist he's doing experiments on people people who have been uh taken over by starro doing experiments on starro uh mocking him calling him the conqueror uh all these things so yeah the thinker is not a good guy either yeah no that's true he's he's very much you know that evil scientist like hey if you're paying enough i'll cut it up and do it <laughs> uh polka dot man polka dot pa- man played by david dusmalchin who is now synonymous with comic book live action stuff. Like he was in the dark Knight. He was in, uh, he's in the Ant-Man movies. He's in the flash TV show. He's in, uh, uh, I think he was also in Gotham, but I'm not sure. I want to say, I think he was in Gotham. I think he did even some voice animation too. Yeah, for, he, so uh, I think DC. Well, we just watched, um, uh, long Halloween. He's the voice of the calendar man. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, so... Which, uh, what? I say, which, speaking of Calendar Man, he had a quick cameo uh, played by Sean Gunn. That's right. Sean Gunn was in this as, as Calendar Man. I was also doing the the body motion capture for Weasel, Sean Gunn. Um, yeah, that's true. But, uh, yeah, Polka Dot Man is played by Davis Dosmalchin, who also writes comic books, too. I forgot to mention that, but... Uh, 
this character, I had absolutely no idea about him before this, but I would have to say he's probably the most powerful one out of all of them. Like his power of just shooting these interdimensional <laughs> polka dots at people and then that it just takes pieces away from them. Like that's that's actually pretty powerful. Right? Yeah, like I want a polka dot man spot team up because <laughs> it's like they seem so ridiculous. But then when you really sit down and look at their uh, uh, power set, you're like, oh, my God, no, I do not want to be anywhere near one of those dudes because it's no. going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, rat catcher and more to the point, rat, cha- rat catcher two. Um I, I, I mean, I didn't even know there was a rat catcher too. I didn't know there was a, a female rat catcher. I don't know if that was created for this, but Taika Waititi is the, is the cameo for the rat catcher one, the father. Um, but yeah, definitely doesn't look like the rat catcher that I've seen in the comic books before. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, portrayed more as a sympathetic villain instead of just the, oh my God, the Pied Piper type of deal. Right. Yes, exactly. Uh, Savant, who was played by Michael Rooker. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. And that Ratcatcher 2 was played by Daniela Melchior. So didn't want to get past that. But Savant, who I know I've heard the name before, but I don't think I've ever actually seen him in the comic books. Created by Gail Simone in Birds of Prey back in 2003, I want to say. Uh, played uh-huh. by Michael Rooker. Uh, has what? Or has accuracy skills, has uh, martial arts skills, uh, all kinds of different like assassin skills. Uh, played by Michael Rooker, killed almost instantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that threw me for a loop. Um, I mean, I'm sure we'll cover that, so we'll finish through the roll call. But I want to revisit that opener. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're digging. We're gonna get there. So. TDK played by Nathan Fillion. So the two two actors that are going to be in every James Gunn movie, Nathan Fillion and Michael Rooker. Uh, TDK, the detachable kid, also known as the detachable arm kid, also known as farm, arm fall off boy from the Legion of Superheroes. And his power is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> he detaches his arms. <laughs> and that was just worthless. Uh, Blackguard. Did you know anything about Blackguard? This is portrayed by Pete Davidson uh, of SNL fame, I would say. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about this character. No, no. Like, I, I just feel like that was something like, oh, what can you wear to, or what can Pete Davidson wear to be in this movie that doesn't cover his face? So I don't know much about that character at all. <laughs> uh, this little blurb here says that uh, Blackguard's actual name is Dick Hertz. <laughs> nice <laughs> uh weasel uh, is a character that's introduced into here once again not a character i've ever heard of before um the body motion capture was was done by sean gunn as i said before one of the funniest lines in the whole movie for me is frick flag saying or honestly it's the whole interaction in the in the plane where he's like they're like what is that thing is it a dog he's like what kind of fucking dog do you think this is and, and then he's like no 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 it's a werewolf and pete davidson's freaking out you put me next to a werewolf and then rick flag coming up and just being like he's harmless what is wrong with he's a weasel he's harm well he's not harmless he killed like 25 kids but yeah he's i don't he agreed to be on this well actually i don't know if he agreed to be on this mission but he's here <laughs> It was a good little interaction. Yeah, no, that was a that was a fun opener scene in the plane where it's like, okay, normally you're all getting hyped up to like, all right, we're gonna go in and we're gonna take this and we're gonna do it, and instead it's like we're scared of each other. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have Javelin being introduced, played by Fula Borg, the German comedian. Um, now, this is a character I know that you know about. <laughs> yeah so javelin uh just because like and the only reason i really know him is because he, he appeared in green lantern so the idea was the fact that he's basically like a uh oh corporate assassin type of guy corporate thief and things like that so he was always going to break into uh uh carol ferris's uh ferris aircraft and and steal stuff and you know, how, how was he able to stop Green Lantern? 
the yellow javelin because back then yellow could break through the green lantern shield so you have a giant uh you know yellow javelin coming at you your green lantern is not going to protect you uh so he just made those appearances and i just guess they were like hey this is ridiculous enough fula borg is on to play then yeah, yeah let's <laughs> let's give him something ridiculous and now with this whole backstory of the javelin that harley quinn believes is like oh this is why i have to carry it okay <laughs> <laughs> and to round out that first uh suicide squad team we have mongal the daughter of mongol the ruler of war world uh another connection to the death of Superman, the or yeah, the death of Superman and uh, Green Lantern, right? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Mongol though, as opposed to Mongol, so it's that's interesting that they would go with that character. Uh, how is Mongol going to react when he finds out that his daughter has been killed by Amanda <laughs> Waller? Uh, we'll find out maybe in the future. Uh, a couple other characters that we do see throughout the in the movie at Bell Reeve, um, as you pointed out, Calendar Man, and then right behind Calendar Man is Double Down, a Flash villain. Don't really know much about him either. Yeah, so he was an he's an interesting cat. Basically, like he can take his skin, and, and like he usually makes. Like, I don't know if he ever made the skin his playing cards or whatnot, but he could take stuff and it just becomes razor sharp projectiles. So that's why it kind of looks like he's got the whole uh, burn markness or skinned look to him on his face there. Because, yeah, he just rips off his own skin and and just throws it and uses stuff like that. So, yeah, pretty crazy looking flash villain to make it to the big screen. And then we get Jotunheim and uh, Corto Maltese. These are both uh, play things that have been mentioned in the comic books before. Uh, and GBS, Gal- Galaxy Broadcasting System, which I assume, oh yeah, is owned by Morgan Edge. And uh, would yep. be the competition to LNN, Luther News Network? Yeah, they're definitely that competition. Uh, Clark Kent's even worked for them at one point because... Morgan Edge is supposed to be like the grittier version of Perry White, you know, like I'm the newsman. I don't care if it's true. I just care that it's first. <laughs> so we get the first team, which consists of Savant, Weasel, Captain Boomerang, Harley Quinn, Rick Flag, uh, Javelin, TDK, TDK Blackguard. And that's it. And Mongal. Um, and they're supposed to infiltrate multiple Corto Maltese and take out the new regime that just took over the, the, the island after the, for the other family was hung in the public square. But we come to find out that they are there just to be the distraction so that the real team can get through, which is... Uh, Peacemaker, Bloodsport, Ratcatcher 2, uh, Polka Dot Man, and one more, right? Uh, shark. Shaking King shark. shark. Thank you. Now, this is one of the things that the, Amanda Waller was really willing to just sacrifice Rick Flag and Harley Quinn. Like, I can understand getting rid of Captain Boomerang, but like Rick Flag and Harley Quinn, you were really just, she was okay with just getting rid of those two? Yeah, actually, I didn't think about it that way. That is kind of interesting. So it's like, you know, Rick Flagg should definitely have some issues with his relationship with Amanda right now. Because, yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, we're going to put you in, in, you know, Operation Frontline. Have fun. <laughs> like, Rick Flagg survives only because he is actually friends with the freedom fighters that are trying to fight against the, the new government and the old government, so to speak. And Harley Quinn only survives because the new president is a fanboy of hers, so to speak. <laughs> uh, so she gets taken to the president's palace. He gets taken to the rebel uh camp which at the time we don't know is the rebel camp because our second team led by idris alba and and uh john cena uh goes to that camp and con- proceeds to kill everybody there <laughs> and probably one of the coolest scenes like every they all end up they're just killing people left and right and uh there's this the scene where john or a peacemaker kills a one guy and he's like you know you don't have to was it what does he say it's uh 
you don't have to brag about it or something like that. And he says, you do when it's fucking dope. And then he's like, God, he's right. <laughs> Yeah, that was funny to play off the uh, bromance competition between Peacemaker and uh, Bloodsport. Like, you know, those poor people, but at the same time, it just makes for such a wacky scene. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, but yeah, so I was, I was, I mean, I was upset to see Captain Boomerang go. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like Jai Courtney. Uh, I thought that his Captain Boomerang is, was one of the best parts of the first movie. Uh, but people had to go. James Gunn even said most people are not going to survive throughout this movie. And guess what? Most people did not survive through this movie. The first 10 minutes though. Wow. (laughs) So yeah, you wanted (laughs) to get to this. What what, what, what do you have to say about this? I was, (laughs) I guess the only words that come to mind properly blown away by that. Um, like I could see, like you mentioned Al Roker and Nathan Fillion, You know, I didn't have them. I didn't expect them having too much. Uh, I know they're in it because they're friends with James Gunn. And it's like, hey, I'm playing. You want to come play? Sure. You know, Um, so I was very, very surprised by that. Uh, The Javelin man or Javelin, like, you know, like him getting blown away. Okay, not surprised, you know, because that actor, that comedian, he's relatively new to me. Like, I've only started seeing him because of the... uh, conan reruns on facebook so i was like oh okay uh jai courtney that was a surprise holy crap like i mean he's a top named actor he was in the first one you know captain boomerang the character you know so i'm just like holy crap like you know that 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 one was the most shocking. I was like, okay. Cause all the other ones, like, like Mongal, I was like, okay, well, I mean, I don't know that actress. I was really expecting more. Nope. She's just in there as, you know, cannon fodder. Um, I, you know, Pete Davidson again, same thing. It's like, okay, well this guy's a, a big dude, you know, like he's a big actor and for him to just basically be in the movie for like 10 minutes, it's like, okay, wow, that's crazy. Uh, it makes sense though. Cause I'm looking here at black guard, the dude, I think only has one appearance, which is surprising because it's a big issue. Booster gold number one. So the first appearance of booster gold. Um, but it was just like, that's crazy. Like I, I did not expect that. And the fact that, um, it started making me worry for, cause like, I mean, I knew Harley Quinn would survive. Cause I do remember some of the scenes, but I did start panicking for Rick flag. I was like, Oh man, he might not make it out of this part because the minute Jai Courtney was taken off the table, it's like, well, you know, if we're not going to have some of these actors return, why do you need some of their characters to be back? So that just, I was, I was thrown for a loop because, you know, they've got the whole classic, like they're walking in front of the flag. They're doing the group walk scene. It's like, all right, so this is the suicide squad. (laughs) And then the first song isn't even over and most of them are killed. (laughs) And you know that it, it, uh, I mean, honestly, like you're not going to kill off Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. Like, yeah, it's just not possible. And I would, speaking of that, you can tell like this movie they didn't know if they were going to be getting Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn in this movie. Cause her storyline is a complete separate storyline from everything else. Like <laughs> other than the fact that she gets the killing blow, just like she got the killing blow in the first suicide squad movie, she is taking out of the story altogether. Cause she is on, she's in the president's like palace. She kills all those bad guys by herself. She kills, you know, she takes out all everything. Like she doesn't need, her storyline can be t- taken out of the story out of this thing completely. And it's almost irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. It's very true. It's, it's a film unto itself, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so we have, we, I, I, I did forget one uh, person. We have, uh, Alice Braga playing, um, the freedom fighter leader, soul Saria. And, uh, with last, comic book thing that we saw her and she was in new mutants as uh cecilia reyes dr cecilia reyes so uh interesting that she's she's walking both sides here yeah that is so that's pretty wild that you know she's dabbled in both universes that's cool um all right so like this is what i've been i'm talking about so uh, let's let's actually let's talk about blood sport real quick so we did a whole uh 101 on the character of blood sport um 
in the comic book that we read about him, <laughs> his first appearance, the, at least this version of <laughs> of uh, Budsport, the Bobby Dubois character, I think that's a, his, his name, uh, Robert yeah. Dubois, um, he had the suit that allowed him to teleport guns to him from somewhere else. His new suit has pieces on it that he can now attach to guns and make any gun he wants. Upgrade or downgrade in power for you? Oh, super upgrade. Oh. Um, yeah, no, I like to me, like I, it's preferable that, you know, he's got the ability to teleport and he can get these weapons and whatnot. You know, because ultimately where they're teleporting from. But I look at it as what if he gets in a place where he can't teleport or even as Superman beat him? You know, he's like, oh, there's a teleportation wave around him. I'll ionize the air around him and then I'll reset the electronics. So he's kind of stuck on his own. True. He's definitely upgraded in that fact that he's, you know, he's actually got armor like the mask, you know, like it's so I, I saw here that it's, it's in, inspired by Alien. So I definitely felt that, you know, it's got that look to it. So he's now got fear as something instead of just a dude with a red do rag coming at you. Um, and then, yeah, those weapons that he could create were just freaking insane. So it's like, no, I think that's, that's cool that he's all set up right there. Um, it'd be interesting to see obviously like with more screen time or whatnot, like, is he also the type of guy who could maybe, assemble weapons out of certain pieces you know like kind of like how uh captain cold the first thing he did was he learned how to take apart his gun and put it back together so then he knows all the components that are necessary mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, no, I definitely felt upgrade <laughs> yeah okay good I, I think you supported your argument well uh amanda waller puts together the second team and uh she tells them or they they start to well is our job to take out the new regime nope that's not the job is our job to uh go and grab this uh thing that they found in outer space and take it out of jotunheim and bring it back nope that's not it either you need to just destroy jotunheim and kill you know just destroy the evidence that uh so that they they so that the new government of Corto Maltese cannot use it against America. Uh, and that's that's their prime directive. So uh, as they get there, it's a, it's a lot more difficult than they expected. But, oh, I've, yeah, I forgot the, the character of Milton, as so did some of the other characters in our, in our show, our movie. Uh, what did you think of that character? Which one was it again? Sorry. Milton, you know, who's with us the whole time. Oh, <laughs> poor Milton. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, and, and that, that, that screams perfectly to like comic books, how they do that. Like there's always that guy who, you know, basically you're Rick Jones, uh, you know, the human who helps these superheroes and they might get to stick around for a while. Then it's just like, eh, we toss them. You know, we don't, we don't care about our snapper cars. So yeah, Milton, <laughs> it's just like, Hey, that's cool. You were there, and then they die, and and I just thought it was funny the way uh, Harley Quinn played that. You know, she's like, "I thought you were Milton." Oh my gosh, you know, and it's like, <laughs> "No, it was the guy you." Oh, yeah, no, we were friends, and it's like, "No, you weren't." <laughs> yeah, that was just. I thought that was great. To me, that's how I took that interpretation. It's like, yeah, that's a great shout out to these human characters that help progress story. But in the end, we don't care about them in, you know, the next time a, a writer takes over. You know, I think the only the only two famous or three famous ones would probably be Jimmy Olsen, Lois Lane and Alfred Pennyworth. But anybody outside that circle, not so much. <laughs> yeah, not so much. Uh, and then the rest of the movie is just about them getting to Jotunheim. Uh, the people that they come across, the the ways that they have to to uh get past others it's all pretty straightforward um what well, what's some of your favorite parts um so it's funny i didn't i didn't i didn't catch it i guess my mind didn't click until the meme but i liked like i enjoyed the scene in the moment with uh when they went to the bar and they were going to try to meet up with the thinker that was fun cuz like they actually felt like people 
you know, like, Hey, we're all going to do a round of shots. Like, all right. You know, we've all been there when with friends, you know, like I don't want to do a shot. We're all doing a shot, even the rat, you know? So that was fun. Um, the dancing. So now it's just like, Oh my gosh, like, uh, is this going to be a thing? You know, uh, Baron Zemo has danced. Uh, Peacemaker has danced, you know, I mean, yes, I know star Lord danced. Uh, so it's just interesting. Like, all right, is this going to be something there? But it just, it was fun. It made it human. Uh, the shark, he was ridiculous, like so ridiculous, but I enjoyed it. Um, that's I another, know there was the one. Oh, go ahead. I was just to say that's another thing, like the whole King Shark and all the different iterations. Even uh, so, you have him in you know the TV show The Flash. There's like four different versions of him. You have him uh, on Harley Quinn animated series where he's play, he's voiced by Ron Funches and and done hilariously. And you have this version of him. You have all the different versions of him in the comic books, like. How is King Shark supposed to be? Is he supposed to be super intelligent, or is he supposed to be super not intelligent? Is he supposed to be uh, the 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 son of a god kind of thing, or what? <laughs> so that that's an interesting question because, like, so my when I think of, I always think about him in Superboy. Like, I, I know, like, I think when Superboy was living in Hawaii, he was one of the villains over there, mm-hmm. and um, so I kind of take it as like he's a primal force, you know, like you know, people would probably worship him like a, like a godling or something to that effect. Um, I don't want to say he's terribly smart, but I also don't, you know, he's not like hand, you know, (laughs) that dumb as well. Um, but it is just funny to see how these characters, you know, especially him, like you're right. You've just called out, like he's appeared in so many places. So, I mean, he's definitely got its intelligence. He's got an agenda. Um, but he was just played, I mean, he's the Groot of the team, you know? And yes, yes, he really is. Like, I, I I, felt so bad for him because I think there was the scene, what is it, like when he's falling floor through floor, and, you know, you just see him getting bounced around and beat, and then he lands on the ground and they start shooting him. I literally was like, no, you know? Like, I cared. I didn't want to see him get hurt, even though he's a shark and he would eat you in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you become his friend. <laughs> uh yeah i mean th- th- this really does just have a whole bunch of great like character moments and and that's okay like it's what makes this movie fun as i stated at the beginning yeah yeah no like comp- comparing it to you know suicide squad and the suicide squad that word right there you just used character it was important because like like you know if i look at blood sport versus dead shot like dead shot i care about him when he's having his fight with batman Mm -hmm. but i didn't pay like i didn't there was nothing to attach me to him after that fact so once he becomes a member of the squad i didn't care about him but with dead shot you know giving him that military past to uh rick flag giving him the just the vileness with him and his daughter you know, like it was enough to like make me interested and like, I'll be honest with you. Like, it's funny because character, like actors play a role so well that I sometimes attach them with that role and like, I dislike them for it. So like Idris Elba, when he played that horrible manager on the office, I was kind of like, I don't like this guy. I could care less, you know, even though he was lovable in the Thor films as Hamadol, but I was just like, God, he's such a vile boss here i was like okay you know what like he's got the acting chops this is fun like he's making me care about a character uh rick flag was even better in this go round like he's somebody i'm invested in polka dot man such tragedy you know so it was like these characters definitely walked away with more because it's like even if you go to captain boomerang what is there about captain boomerang besides the fact that he's a link to a dc character nothing much so james gunn definitely put character into these characterless people that made us care about them like i i kind of want to revisit that meme it was like you know dc takes characters i like and puts them into films where i don't like them marvel takes characters i don't like and makes me care about them something to that effect Mm -hmm. and like that happened here this is the first time in a dc film where i'm like i look forward to those characters uh Speaking of Rick Flag, let's get to the the ending. That uh, Peacemaker is on a separate mission from <laughs> Amanda Waller. She he also has to get rid of any evidence that America had any involvement in this because America is the one that actually grabbed uh, Starro from outer space and 
put it here for them to do experiments on. Um, as Rick Flagg finds this out, he's like, no, the, the world needs to know this. America fucked up. Like, they did this. And peacemakers, no, no I can't let that happen because peace in America is my, my objective. And I'll kill anybody that I need to kill to make sure that happens. Uh, <laughs> it, to the point where they, they fight and, and he stabs him through the heart, I, I believe, with a piece of glass or something. Uh, and the last words from Peacemaker, which, so I didn't know this. I just read this on uh, BuzzFeed, but uh, Rick Flagg dies at Yodelheim in uh, Suicide Squad issue number 26, written by wow. John Ostrander. Yeah. <laughs> did you know that? Well, I, I did not, because sadly, and I need to, uh, John Ostrander's Suicide Squad, I need to read it. But I just, you know, villain books, I'm like, ah, I've got other stuff I need to read, but this definitely got fast tracked. And with you pulling up that comic book point, yeah, I probably when we're done here, I think I'm gonna have to at least skim that issue and check it out. But that that is cool. Like that just gives this movie more points in my book. So and then right after watching the movie, uh, I had to text you to ask you if this was a uh reference or not. But the peacemaker, what a joke line from uh, Rick Flagg as he's dying at, by the hand of Peacemaker. Now, is that a reference to the comedian from Watchmen, or am I stretching? Well, so it's interesting. Like it, it's it's well said because it's gonna like it can it can definitely spark conversation, which obviously did. Um, because the character of Peacemaker himself, he is a joke. You know, it's like, I love peace so much, I'll go to war for it. You know, it's, I think of George Carlin, you know, it's like, well, yeah, let's, let's screw for virginity then, you know, like when he <laughs> makes fun of the idea of peace fighters and fighting for that stuff. And it's like, huh, it's just interesting. Um, you know, I'd, I'd really like to go and do some more research on Peacemaker when he was over at Charlton. Like, you know, how, how did the guy go about? Um, and really, Peacemaker's only big contribution to comic books is the fact that he's the prototype for what would lead to the comedian, which again goes to the extremism of that idea that it's like, wait, you'll kill somebody to save a life. You know, those, those dualities and those polarizing dualities of these things. So it's, it's well said. I'd be curious to see like, was it actually phrased that way somewhere? Is that what Alan Moore used in his notes for why he wants to turn peacemaker into the comedian? but it plays perfectly well to the comic book fan that knows, wait a second, Peacemaker is, you know, uh, a, a variant to steal from Loki, a variant of comedian or vice versa. So <laughs> it definitely, it was well said. It got me thinking that I don't think there was any directness to the quote, but it'd be interesting to see. Maybe, maybe there is somewhere. Um, and then, yeah, so Rick Flagg dies there. Um, any possibility that we see Joel Kinnaman as Rick Flagg again in a future movie? I could see it. I definitely could. I mean, we live in a world of comic books where, you know, I mean, you don't see his body, you know, you didn't see him buried. So it's like, huh, that's interesting. And I mean, even in the DCEU standards, we've seen Superman die in return. So, you know, it's it's not totally unfathomable you know maybe there's something in that lab that could have gotten on him and resurrects him and now he has to be the you know the guy like he's going to want to stop suicides or he's going to want to stop amanda waller but obviously amanda waller is going to throw the squad in front of him you know or maybe he comes back as the guy who builds the anti-squad you know so there's definitely i i could see it happening and i wouldn't mind it happening so interesting thing you just brought up too uh, James Gunn's original storyline had Henry Cavill Superman as the bad guy in this movie. No kidding. Yep. The Suicide Squad was wow. going to go up against Superman. I'm I'm guessing a Superman taken over by Starro. That could definitely make sense because I think they even have the video game that basically has that idea because I think it was, what, about a year ago when they launched yep. that trailer and it's, you know, Superman's the bad guy in that. Yep, you're absolutely right. So I wonder if that led to the change or if they were just like, nah, that's we don't want to put Superman in that light. So and also, I guess the the rat Sebastian, uh, rat catcher's rat. Uh, one of the names that they have for the rat is uh, Crisp Rat. Did you see that? 
<laughs> I did, yes. <laughs> and then I guess James Gunn texted Chris Pratt about that, who said that he found it hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Well, because I, I think of that that definitely that that's been a an old thing. Like I know when uh, I think it even goes all the way back to Chris Pratt playing in Parks and Rec, where it's like somebody was like, "Yeah, my dad heard his name," and they're like, "God, he must have mean parents." And it's like, "Wait, why?" Because his name is Chris Pratt. It's like, <laughs> no, it's Chris Pratt. So if you don't enunciate, it goes to that. So I can imagine that's been out there for a long, long time. Yep. And I think. You know, uh, James Gunn is like, all right, now is the time. Here we go. Uh, and what's really interesting, do you know why James Gunn picked rats? Why? Because after he did Guardians of the Galaxy, raccoons, the image of raccoons changed. They went from being these horrible creatures that people would hate to actually becoming cute creatures that people wanted to save and he was just blown away by that he's like wait what and he was like well okay if you really sit down and look at the you know that spectrum of the animal kingdom rats are far more superior they're smarter they can do a lot more so his hope is that after this movie people will go out and save the rats you know buy rats do more with rats to give them you know a better life than what they currently do have hmm I like that. Yeah. Uh, and then that just brings us to the end of the movie. Uh, what's his face? Um, Bloodsport has uh, the the piece of information that Peacemaker was going to steal and and destroy, and he has it like socked away and tells Amanda Waller that hey, if you don't give us what we want, let us all go free. This this information gets out. Uh, so. I don't know. Does that mean that those particular characters don't get to come back for another Suicide Squad movie? Because how will they be in jail if they have this thing over Amanda Waller? Yeah, that's going to be interesting. But maybe they come back as, you know, the the quote unquote bad guys in this weird world of the Suicide Squad. You know, maybe like Amanda's like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to try to kill you, obviously, because you've got all this information. Uh, so, you know, maybe that's how we see them again. Because there, there's definitely always a way, you know, like it, it's kind of funny. It makes me think of these articles where they're like, oh, you know, uh, the guy who plays um, Rick Flagg, you know, they're like, oh, right now he's championing for a, a Dick Ayer cut of the Suicide Squad. It's like, well, of course he is, because that means more work for him. That means more money. Like, who wouldn't favor that? You know, like, oh, you know, does, uh, you know, Sebastian Stan want to play the Winter Soldier? Yes, of course he does. He wants to make money and have more towards his career. So I definitely think that's a slick way for them as writers and movie makers to say, okay, look, we can exit the character just in case if the actor doesn't want to come back. But there is also enough that he can come back and play the part if they want to. All right. Uh, anything else that you wanted to throw in there? Oh, there's the, I'm sorry, the after credit scene. We have uh, Peacemaker is not dead. Now, when they were walking through the hospital, I immediately thought that Rick Flagg wasn't going to be dead. But yeah, it's Peacemaker, which then is going to lead into our HBO Max TV series that uh, is going to be pe the Peacemaker TV series, which we were originally told was going to be a uh, uh, Peacemaker prequel series, like ah. something that took place before the Suicide Squad. But now we know that it was a ruse because they didn't want to tell us that he was going to survive. Uh, this is going to take place after. So I'm guessing a redeeming TV series? I think so. I think it's got to be because it was interesting because... In the movie, when we see the heel turn, you're like, okay, well, it makes sense, you know, because Amanda Waller could have planted him in prison. So he, he was always a soldier for the American government's plot. Um, but I definitely see that he's kind of becoming the face of DC, so to speak. So it's like, okay, well, we have to take him. We have to grow him up from being this douchey bro to being... A superhero we want to love anything else that you wanted to bring up about the movie well i guess so there's a lot of great articles um i'm really excited about this one from screen rant talking about their uh easter eggs so they've got like 30 of them in there so it's pretty wild um obviously there's a lot of freedom here so like weasel as a character uh it's basically based off of bill the cat from bloom county so that's pretty wild um 
there is reference to it being an actual sequel, obviously with Boomerang and Rick Flag and Harley Quinn. So that's pretty cool that, you know, if you if you want to take it as a fresh start, you can. Or if you want to believe in the DCEU, that's there as well. Um, I love the fact that Amanda Waller got hers in the end. You know, like I thought that was cool that the uh, government toadies, you know, decided, no, we're going to ultimately choose to do the right thing instead of just protecting our jobs. You know, well, that was really cool. It's also a good turn of events from the first Suicide Squad movie, right? Because in that one, all of the people that were loyal to her and were helping her out, she kills. She just turns around and shoots them all because they're a liability. Like, this is them being like, no, 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 you don't get to shoot us. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. I forgot about it. I mean, you know, the first one. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. All right. I like that. That's good symmetry. Um, this one I found really interesting about the Corto Maltese. I did not make that connection until actually probably just a couple of days ago. So Corto Matisse, which is featured in this film, I was thinking about that. That was featured in Batman 89. Vicky Vell was taking pictures of the revolution. So that's kind of cool that now there's a little bit of a link to Batman 89 in that. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, Corto, Corto Maltese was featured in the Dark Knight Returns. So that's definitely, you know, a huge reason why I would have made the jump into Batman 89. So I really like that, that that's played into there. Uh, the Kryptonite Bullet, as we mentioned earlier, I thought that was great that they, you know, like, hey, this is how uh, important, um, whatchamacallit, um, blood sport can be. Um Oh, I, and so yeah. Oh. Something you just screened, you just scrolled past. Uh, one of the inmates in the female side of uh, Bell Reeve, the the website you're on, Screen Rant, puts that down as crazy quilt. But the other website that I w- was looking at said that it was kaleidoscope. So I wonder which one is right. Oh, that is very interesting. Because you know what? I think I saw that too on uh, Game Rant. They had it there as well. And I think they mentioned her as kaleidoscope. So, yeah. Um, I don't know which one you've got, but that, that could be two points leading us towards Kaleidoscope. So that could be something interesting. I think we'd have uh, to talk, you'd have to talk to James Gunn to find out which one it actually is. <laughs> He'd be sly enough to be like, it's whatever you need it to be. Yeah, this is true. Um, but yeah, no, but it was just all in all, it was great. It was fun. Um, you know, uh, I'm sure I'm going to say her name wrong. Palm Lamentif. Yep. Uh, so she's got a quick cameo in there. So that's cool. Another one of, you know, James Gunn's, uh, you know, coworkers making, making a jump over as well. Um, but yeah, no, just a ton of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, again, you know, these aren't necessarily characters that are big, but they're characters now that I, I definitely enjoyed. So just a lot of fun. All right. So then, am- oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I gave you too much of a pause and then I jumped, but uh, I definitely am looking forward to it. I will say this, like I probably was going to watch Peacemaker, the TV show, uh, just because it's like, well, I've got this HBO Max. I might as well make it do something for me. Now I'm actually actively looking forward to it. So that did a good job of making me care about something that I really didn't care about. Yeah, no, no kidding. Like this, I wouldn't, I could not care less more of, of a character. I could not care less more that doesn't sound right (laughs) care yeah anyways you know what i'm trying to say about peacemaker (laughs) but now i'm interested in watching that show and what what they end up doing will it be a good show i don't know i mean james gunn is writing it so i'm sure it's gonna be pretty good yeah well my hope is uh maybe they'll sneak in some more of those charlton characters maybe uh you know nathaniel or ted will make an appearance i hope (laughs) that would be cool uh, next week, we are going to try and do our own version of this particular movie storyline in the Marvel Universe. So that is going to be our challenge the next time you hear us. Uh, if you want to talk to me about this movie or anything else that we talked about this week, find me on Twitter. I'm at Mitchipedia GEM. GEM stands for Geekly Media. Chris, where can people find you online? So if you'd like to chat with me about toilet bowl helmets, please find me on Twitter as stuff I should say should being spelled S H U D and then check out my writings on geeklyatmedia.com and aiptcomics.com. The rest of Geekly Media is at Geekly Media on Twitter at Geekly Media on Instagram and facebook.com forward slash Geekly Media is our Facebook page. Check out archived episodes of this podcast and other podcasts on our website, geeklyatmedia.com. 
But uh, if you are listening to it as as a on a podcatcher, please rate and review us. It helps spread the word of our network. And check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Media for ex- exclusive material that you can only get if you're one of our patrons. But until next time, this is Imagine If on the Geek Elite Media Network saying, always remember to geek, geek out. out. This concludes our broadcast.